Now that you've completed the physical installation of your Hike Vision temperature screening terminal, it's time to get ready to configure this device so that it can operate the way you want it to. But like with any new device, there's a little bit of housekeeping that you have to do. You want to make sure that you've got the latest firmware, and if you're going to use any of our software clients, you want to make sure you have that as well. So how are we going to get those items? We're going to start off by going to the Hike Vision website, and for the firmware, we're going to go to Products, Access Control, Facial Recognition Terminal, and we're going to look for our temperature screening terminal here in the list. I'm going to select it, and here's my download section. I can get the latest user manual, the data sheet, and here we have the latest firmware. I want to go ahead and select this, agree, and start the download process. Now I'm not going to bore you with the download, I've already done it, so let me go ahead and bring it up and show it to you. I've got it here on my D drive in a folder called firmware. When I open the folder, I'm going to see a zip file containing three different parts of this firmware upgrade. I'm going to go ahead and extract those files right here, and I get this folder, and if I look inside of that folder, I have one, two, but not the third file that I'm looking for. It's actually zipped, so I'm going to have to unzip this file as well. And now I have three different portions of my firmware upgrade. Inside each of these folders is the actual firmware file that I'm going to need, whether it be for the extension module, for the access control module, or for the thermal module. There's also a document called How to Upgrade Temperature Screening Terminal. And if you were to open that document up, you'll see that there is an order in which these should be done. We're gonna upgrade the main firmware file first, then we're gonna upgrade the extension device, and then finally we're gonna upgrade the thermal module. It also shows you which files go with which type of device. However, the device is pretty smart, and if you try to use the wrong file with the wrong part, it's gonna warn you about that. So now we've got all the firmware files that we need. Now it's time to make sure that we have the right client. In this case, I'm gonna be using IVMS 4200. So to get that, we're gonna to go to software, IVMS 4200 series, and in this case, since I have a Windows PC, I'm gonna do IVMS 4200 for Windows, and I'm gonna go ahead and choose to download the software, this being the latest available version. Now I have already got the IVMS 4200 installed, so I'm not gonna bore you with the download. If you're not familiar with IVMS 4200 at this point, we're not gonna cover that in this video, but you can reach out to your local sales engineer or give a call into our tech support and they'll be happy to help you out. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch now over to the IVMS 4200 platform, and I'm gonna go into device management. In this case, I've already added my temperature screening terminal device to my system. Because what I wanna focus on now, as we said, is upgrades. So I'm gonna to go to the remote configuration icon here, and I'm gonna open this up. This is going to allow me to do remote configuration, or in this case, the upgrade of my temperature screening terminal. So I'm gonna to go to the system maintenance section, and here is the upgrade section. And if I click on select type, I have access controller and extension module. We're gonna be doing two upgrades under the access controller section and one upgrade under the extension module. So all we have to do now is browse to our firmware files, which in my case, again, was on the D drive under firmware in this folder. And this is the main software right here. I'm gonna go ahead and choose this digicap.dav, click on open. I have access controller, digicap.dav, click on upgrade, and the system will go through the upgrade process. However, it's going to actually disconnect because it's going to do a reboot of the system. You will get an on-screen message telling you that you need to reconnect. At that point, all you're gonna do is come back into the IVMS 4200 and click again on remote configuration. This will open your remote configuration window again. You can go back to system maintenance and in this case, the next item that we want to upgrade according to the PDF is the extension module. So I've got extension module selected. 
module number one because I only have one controller. So my controller is number one at this point. And I'm going to click on Browse. I'm going to go back to the firmware folder and find the extension module folder. And inside of that folder is a subfolder. And inside of that is a bin file. So I'm going to choose that BIN file and I'm going to click on upgrade. And again, the process will start the upgrade and eventually it will disconnect from the device and tell you so. So at that point, you're going to need to come back and reconnect for remote configuration, just like the last time. And we'll go back again to system maintenance. And this time we're going to choose access controller, but we're going to browse to the thermal file this time, the thermal module. And this is a DigiCap file as well, but it's got a little bit of a longer name on it. We'll click on open, and then we will do choose the upgrade process on this as well. This is when I need to upgrade all three modules. It's possible that we may put out an upgrade for just one module within the system. Once you've got those upgrades all done, you can actually go to device information and what we're going to look for is at least to see that our main firmware version is fully upgraded, version 2.2.6 build 2.0.0.9.0.3. And just as a reminder, if we go back and we look at the upgrade file that we downloaded, the main version is version 2.2.6 2.0.0.9.0.3. So we've got the latest firmware installed. There is one last but very important step to this firmware upgrade. Anytime you do a firmware upgrade to a height vision thermographic device, we recommend that you restore the device to system defaults. Let me show you how it's done. We'll go into the remote configuration, system maintenance, but before I actually click on restore defaults, if it's a device that has heavy configuration already done to it, I'm going to export the configuration file and I'm going to save that somewhere. And that way I'll be able to import that configuration file back in later. But what I want to do at this point is I want to go ahead and restore the defaults. Now this will restore everything except for the IP address that you may have already set into the device. I'll go ahead and click on continue to restore. I should get a message in the lower right hand side of the screen telling me that it's being rebooted now and the device has been restored to system defaults with the exception of the IP address. At this point, if I had configurations that I wanted to load back in, then I could go ahead and import those. At this point, we're ready to move forward with actual configuration of this device. Configuration can be done directly from the temperature screening terminal and configuration can be done via the IVMS 4200 software or even through our Hike Central software. Some things must be done at the terminal, other things can be done via the software. In the next video, we're going to start off the initial configuration of this device. Look in the description box below for a link to the next video in this series.